Привет всем! Welcome to this review looking at the Meng 148 scale F4G Phantom 2 Wild Weasel and a few little extras. We'll look at the extras later, a few juicy upgrades from Quinta. Let's have a look at this box, okay, nice attractive box art. As usual, I think it's depicting the last operational use of the aircraft in uh, Desert Storm campaign, points to note, Boeing licensed product, they pay more for them. Is it the best F4G? I don't know. I can tell you that there's been basically three of them in 148 scale. The first one being the Legacy Hasegawa kit, uh, which was, you know, amazing back in the day. Zukimura brought out one, and now we've also got Meng following up. So this is the uh, long nose phantoms which really have been long awaited for and uh, great to see so uh, a bit of info on here i'll write this out in the description read it out in your own time i can't say as i said i, I don't know if this is better or worse than the zukimura one i know it's a lot cheaper and also the zukimura one's a little bit more difficult to obtain so i've got this one to build and i'm happy let's have a look what's inside here Okay, got the pamphlets, which we'll look at soon. Sprues, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and water stickers. Okay, we'll start off with the instructions as usual, and then we'll have a look at the parts in detail. Just a point to note, this will be built. I build all of my reviews and I don't abandon them like other channels do. You know the ones I'm talking about, the ones that uh, need to take the biggest, greatest kits, start them off, lead you down the garden path and never finish them. But anyways, we will build this pretty soon, I think. So anyways, instruction pamphlet, nice little book, colored. And what we have inside here, is just a quick description of you know the usual sort of safety type stuff a few hints and tips and tells you which tools you need and then we get straight into the construction of a cockpit tub which seems to be detailed with water stickers the main thing is though is that we have got it looks like surface relief we'll have a look at all these parts in detail then we're going to build up the cockpit gets pushed into the top part of the fuselage and then they've got this pretty sort of unique way of attaching on the horizontal stabs which I need a look at this here I'm not too convinced these are the only photo etch parts that you get inside here by the way uh, W1, W2 and I think this is just so that you can move them which is not too you know like my philosophy, you guys know it, models aren't toys. I'm not interested in moving the stabilitors. I want them to attach firmly, and also I like to attach them later on when I've done the metallics. But we'll, we'll have a look at that during the build. Uh, here is landing gear bay assemblies. Look kind of detailed, look like some detail there. We'll check all that out. And then we put it, all those parts into the what forms the bottom part of the wing and the bottom part of the fuselage. Okay, we looks like we have got the full length uh, air inlets, which is a great thing with the compressor faces, it seems here. And then unusually again, we're attaching wings on at this point prior to dropping the one piece sort of fuselage. Basically these Phantoms, there's a couple of approaches. Yeah, Academy did it this way. Uh, and then the other way, of course, is typical, you know, two halves that glue together. The beauty of this is, is that you don't need to deal with this seam on the dorsal part of the, uh, the fuselage. And then critical part of all these Phantoms here is uh, getting these air intakes. Hopefully the fit, etc., is all kind of nice here. Okay, points to note, the flaps are separate and also you can pose them 
either retracted or drooped. And also the nozzles seem to be multi-segmented. Hopefully they got detail inside and outside, we'll see. And more detail, quite a detailed uh, a rudder as well, rudder tail assembly as well, looks pretty good. And distinctive features of these uh, these Phantoms of course is you know the, the slats, the leading edge slats, you can pose them extended or attracted. They are not hydraulically operated or electrically operated, they operate under gravity so bear in mind if you're posing the aircraft on the ground they will be extended. Quite a nice bit of detail here as well on the landing gear bay doors, all the paint call outs. I'll just talk about that when we get get uh, a little bit further on. Gear gets attached, etc. And then we've got this part here. This is obviously going to be a separate part because they have also brought out the F4E. So this on the F4E contains a 20 mic mic cannon. On the F4G, this is an antenna to detect enemy radars. Uh, okay, now we're moving on to the pylons, which look pretty detailed. Uh, the F4 Phantom, uh, F4 2 Phantoms contain the flare launchers and countermeasure packed packs attached to the pylons, and we also have the very typically attached external tanks, and we actually have all three of them which is great to be honest. Okay, uh, typical wild weasel loadout is AGM-88 Harm high speed anti-ration missiles. And we get, uh, how many of them do we get? Times two. And also same loadout as the Hornet that I recently built, AGM-65s. And then we've also got the other earlier variant of anti-radiation missile, the AGM-78, and then we've also got the countermeasures pods two off, so that's pretty good, quite a, you know, pretty good selection of weaponry, gives you some options there, ejector seats are being placed on later on, and uh, this is what they typically do here now, instead of any photo etch, the actual, uh, is it a HUD on there, on a Phantom 2? Tell me if I'm right or wrong, it might just be a, it might just actually be a, a target. I, I think I think these have got avionics, so I'm assuming that's odd. But um, it slips into a plastic part there. It's really easy to make. Um, might need to check on the accuracy of that. Is there anything can do about it? No, not really. Haven't got any aftermarket for this, bar the parts from Quinter that we're going to have a look at. The cockpit assembly is good, and again, I don't know what it is with uh, the Tamiya Phantoms, uh, Zukimura Phantoms, and these Phantoms. Why haven't they got the mirrors? They haven't got the mirrors inside the cockpits, which are pretty distinctive features. And as for, if memory serves me right, even the Hasegawa ones back in the day had them as photo etch parts. So we'll address that. Final part is attaching on a pit or tube you've got a supplied metal one also you can use a plastic uh, one if that's your preference parts mapping so there's all your bits and pieces here's the schemes very attractive schemes these are you know research schemes as, as in they've got some detail I, I really like when they do this they've got the the pilot the EWO they tell you where it was based, the time period, and they follow that up on, you know, really attractive schemes there. So you've got the grey, which is the last operation deployment in the early 90s, and also the legendary, like, what do you call this, lizard scheme, or ETO or scheme, I, I think lizard scheme, I think the wraparound scheme. Uh, really, really well remember the box art from the Hasegawa featuring this. I, I really like this just from nostalgia purposes and Spandaglum Air, Air Base in Germany in the 80s. And pretty good comprehensive instruction showing us also the painting of the pylons for the, you know, the various versions.
and uh, there's the pink call out points to note as well is sadly well let's have a look here's, here's the paint guide I mention it every time that the only main paints who has main paints I certainly don't uh, but and the other call out is rather unusually is Mr. Colour Gunzi Sanyo Accretion which is the water based um, well <laughs> acrylic paints from Gunzi Sanjo. fortunately we have got the descriptors of all the paints that's what I use anyways as I always say I go and use my references and do my own research when it comes to painting aircraft tanks etc be what it is and also a pretty good guide here as well showing you uh, how the supplied masks are applied to various parts so anyways let's have a look at the parts in detail now okay so as uh, some of you will be aware this is the way I present the details I'll show you the overall sprue and then we'll go into macro to show you the details so you can judge with your own eyes what you think of it so this sprue basically containing of note a one piece nose cone radome the cockpit tub and it looks like some of the NLG bay door areas and also the landing gear as well so let's immediately move in and have a look at the detail on these parts okay I'll start off with that part of the bay there and you can see there's quite a bit of molded on detail there this is the cockpit tub these panels here will get filled in so the actual panels themselves have got the relief on them so that gives you the option obviously if you don't want to use the water stickers you can just paint the details yourself so I think that's the preferred option for most people MLG struts look pretty good quite a lot of nice fine detail scissor links integrally molded air brakes look pretty awesome as well these got really nice riveted detail on them uh, I can't remember people call these splitter plates I'm not too sure if that's really the correct term but these are basically the they control the air inlets yeah the speed of the air entering the air the trunking for the air inlets and distinctive detail here seems to be quite well captured looks really pretty good anything else on there we want to see maybe just some few other little pieces detail obviously they've, they've put in the effort and I think this is what we see with Meng Meng aircraft uh, earlier on there wasn't too many but these 148 scale jets I'm really impressed with them so far okay flight control services on this sprue here flaps the slat extensions this is the uh, note one thing yeah the wings cannot fold up but you have got the these this is the extension this is the extended part of the wing that would slot into this part here and it's really nice thin well molded and you can also see the um, guides for where the slats sit as well there you go that is the way panel detailing should look really crisp thin and just deep enough that it takes the wash so uh, no complaints so far two times sprue thus engines with the nozzles made of multiple components that looks like the burner ring and that's the turbine face that looks like the compressor face again let's have a look in detail these will be pretty deep absolutely perfectly fine for what it is the outer portion uh, the phantoms nozzles aren't you know absolutely amazing to look at I would expect this to be a little bit maybe sharper deeper here but I'm pretty sure we can work with the wash here and more importantly is this part which they detailed really well the inner face is really well detailed this is the same way that uh, 
Tamiya do their no nozzles on the F-35 that are recently built and on their F-4B. And I think it's a really awesome solution for getting all the detail on both sides and also you haven't got anything to worry about in terms of ejector pin marks. The seats are not bad, you know, I mean there's some detail there that we can work with. And here is one of the nose wheels. And here is the main landing gear wheels. Pretty good, pretty good detail. I'll have to work with this because I haven't got the any aftermarket bar what we're gonna look at pretty soon. Okay, quite a lot. I'm gonna sort of skip through this part. We've got a lot to look at in terms of armament. So in many instances, like we've got four off of the sparrows. I'll show you closer, but the point to note is that Basically, it's a one-part molding, which is wonderful. Here we are, the very distinctive F4G tail. Notice the, uh, the antenna that's integral to the top of the, of the tail there, and also the electronic warfare officer's um, station here. So he's got his console there, uh, distinctive to the F4G, and also one of these ECM pods. Just going to move in quickly and show you some detail. Okay, again, really nice fine detailing on here. The slime light itself is actually proud of the surface here. So this is where you've got these, basically the formation lights. Um, and I suppose that there's some water stickers that will go on top of this. Could be sanded down a little bit to give it a bit of finesse, I think. But other than that, looks uh, looks pretty good. AIM-7 Sparrow, just quickly show you that. Everything, of oh, note, the, in particular, the flight control surfaces are really nice, sharp, thin, and the only ones that you need to add on are these two, and also the antenna that becomes, that gets glued onto the body of the missile itself. Okay, here's basically the bulk of the ordnance laid out here. Uh, very generously, six, times Maverick missiles and of the anti-radiation missiles you get two off of each type so which is really good again I mean I expected only one of each and maybe a pair of these it's great for the spares box as well the Mavericks come with these clear parts which are the seeker heads for the TV guided version of the weapon Okay, here's the Maverick. In this case, it can't be made of one part because the fin's just too big here. But um, other than that, looks really good. It should assemble up really nicely. And as I mentioned, very generous of them to give us six off. The early anti-radiation missile, again, two parts, which is what we sort of expect. But again, pretty good detail on. And famous AGM. 88 HARM and again two parts but looks great and also the pylon as well the specialist pylon for launching it is also on this sprue on this sprue we have got the fuel tanks pylons and another ECM pod and also a bit of trunking as well so let's just have a quick look at that start off with these pylons super duper detailing again it's gonna be great taking a wash and that other type of ECM pod. And like I said, great that we've got the the three fuel tanks, which is excellent. We, you know, commonly with Phantoms, we also we always see the two wing mounted ones, but it's great that we've got the ventral one as well. And here's the trunking. Of course, you're going to get some pin marks inside here. Uh, your choice to fill them or otherwise. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Depends really on how much depth you've got looking in. In many cases, uh, you just can't see that far in, and all you need to do is just, you know, just make sure that there's nothing sticking proud of the surface. But other than that, looks uh, looks really good to me. Okay, this sprue F. We'll just look at it solitarily on on uh, macro. Uh, really nice that we've got a boarding ladder included, which is a nice little feature. Here is the part of the cockpit. 
and I think I should have had a look at this better because I'm guessing that the glass gets mounted on top of these parts something I don't really like um, here is part of the framing and there's also some instrument clusters there pilot's pedals here's the glare shield and on here on top of here we get the HUD and there's also a clear part that gets mounted on top for the HUD reflector this here is the parachute brake housing but all oh, really nice fine details pylons like I keep on saying really nice detailing panel lining etc looks really good uh, actually my mistake when I mentioned about the the framing for the canopy the actual plastic parts we're going to look at are the internal section the internal framing which is great <laughs> thank goodness for that here are the clear parts I'm not really going to open these up I just don't want to get them all scratched up but let me just say that first of all excellent protection which is you know a plus and the parts are crystal clear as always you know with the again the detailing so there's nothing else we really need to say about that bar the fact that I think the Hasegawa Phantoms what you would get these are obviously individual components we've got the 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 front um the front part of the the cockpit glazing then you've got the pilots section and then the ewo section and also a middle framing section on the hasagawa kits i think you got them all as one if you wanted to pose the cockpit closed but as long as everything fits up nicely not a problem okay the hero parts the slide mode parts yeah and this shows you that money was spent on this on the development of this kit certainly and obviously on the molds to bring out these large slide molds which i mean obviously i've been playing with the thing i think it's great that at this stage straight away you can just place the thing together and have a look at the fit and the size of the airframe and you know the impressions of this phantom immediately you can hold the thing in your hands and get a good appreciation for it yeah with everything you know obviously in this day and age things should line up nicely and uh, indications are good on here we've got the rear section of the heat shielding at the rear of the aircraft i'm going to show you that in a second in detail um, also we've got the air intake trunking and the very distinctive antenna for the f4g okay let's have a look at the cockpit de at the panel line detailing on the aircraft you know what i'm going to say anyways we've already got a very positive impression of this phantom kit already with everything looking pretty good the things to know here is because it's been slide molded we don't lose any details it drops around the curves yeah of the of the airframe and that is really good i think they've sectioned the joins as well along panel lines which would be a plus check your references i certainly will be and then the underneath this is the uh yeah ventral portion of the wing and meng here made an omission the distinctive feature of these uh, late late wing f4 phantoms the long nose phantoms is they have a strengthening plate that runs along here and they missed that off they emitted that we've got a solution obviously in the quinter part so i'll explain that in a second here's the recesses for the sparrow missiles again they've been really well done overall impressions are fantastic here's the one of the intake trunks again all that detailing riveting etc i believe these are slide molded so that you can get this part here nicely molded there is one knockout mark there that's easy to sand off and that looks pretty good to me and here's somewhat of an anomaly on this kit they've gone massively over the top on like this sort of ribbing here which is not a feature of the heat shielding of this aircraft so okay you could ignore it is it a, it's it's not a killer it's not it doesn't kill the 
the, the model itself, but it's just unusual. It's just like a quirk. What I'll probably do is use some filler and sand this down to get this not so distinctive. It certainly should not look like this. And the reason that they've done this, maybe they wanted to accent the detail or something. Anyways, we don't know, but it, it, it just does not look realistic. Okay, finally, the uh, antenna for the F4G. Nothing really to note. Uh, just another great piece of slide molding. Okay, the final sort of supply parts are water stickers by Cartograph, which is, you know, a mark of quality. When a kit includes Cartograph, I'm pleased. That's like one thing about Revell. They, they always include absolutely awesome water stickers, as do Meng, by using, you know, a quality manufacturer. Here you can see the how they've done the detailing of the cockpit instrumentation, which is, you know, pretty good actually. You know, you can get away with using that. Nothing wrong with that. On top of the recess detail, it looks really good. Colors and everything, bright, vibrant. You won't have any problems with this. Also, they have also included the sort of anti-slip portions as well. If you want to use this, you can paint this. It's your option. In terms of accuracy of this kit, I think the shape, etc., there's no questions about that. You know, it looks like an F4 Phantom 2 late. Um, but also, I think there's some questions about the rear of the instruments of the EWA, EWO station. And also, there are some antennas missing that will scratch build when it comes to the build. Okay, now this is a great feature. I talk about this <laughs> during all my reviews. Include die cut masks with all your kits why not you know just going to that little bit extra really helps all builders and thank you meng for doing that for us and here is these pe parts that form part of the detail for the rear stabs and also that little metal pitot tube okay so let's go straight on to these extra aftermarket parts okay so we all know that Quinta produce interior cockpit details. These are the latest things. They're including 3D printed parts within them. So we'll have a look at that in a second. And also in particular for the main part, as I mentioned, the reinforcement strap for the underneath wing portion is included as a 3D decal. Let's open these up and have a look. Okay, so here is what's included for this reinforcement plate. Uh, did it bother me that this was missing from the kit? Not at all. I would have built this easily without this part. The only reason I got this is just to show you that there is, you know, for some people that need that that aspect, um, you know, I even saw one guy is actually dissecting a Zukimura kit just for this detail, which I can't fathom, but, um, Here's a solution for it, and also it's going to be easy to apply. So I just wanted to show you that, you know, that aspect of um, of the error that they made with the main kit can be corrected with this, and, and we'll put it on, it's really easy. Okay, so with the Quinta cockpit set, there's quite a few, there's a few versions, and this is the bigger set, okay? So this one includes, obviously, all the wonderful cockpit consoling etc so we need to remove the detail that's uh that meng took the trouble to engrave onto their parts and then we'll replace it with this also i believe the main kit did not include any side console detail so here we have a solution to that we've we've got the side console detail and what will be the problem as usual will be color matching the paint i don't get too hung up about these things some people do and i'll just do as best i can also there was a choice as well you could have a late or earlier wild weasel instrumentation i think that's mainly for the uh, ewo and there's a few extra instruments i think for the pilot but uh, I chose the late set. This bigger set includes the detailing 
for the supplied Martin Baker ejection seat. So instead of having to buy extra resin parts, I'm going to use these to detail the kit ejection seats. And I think these will hopefully do the job. They certainly look impressive. Okay, the final part is a 3D printed. What it basically is, it's for the EWO. It's the rubber gaiter that covers his screen. Yeah, I'm not gonna open this up. Watch my build and you'll see all this in detail. I just don't wanna take this out of here at this point in time. But uh, you've got an option as well if you want this 3D printed part in, you could probably scratch it or do something else, but that's included. So anyways, that concludes part one of the F4G Phantom. And if you want to follow the build in Patreon, join me on Patreon because the actual build itself is very likely to be a music video. Okay guys, take it easy and see you soon.